the reason I'm here is basically just to describe what being a food producer on the island is like and, and, and how we came to be here and how it impacts on my life. And um, so I want to start off by giving everyone a little bit of history on that. Um, we bought the farm, uh, it'll be 13 years this spring, and we bought it from a fellow named Artie Wickham. And uh, that spring when we first moved here, I, I, I remember, I mean, I was very naive and very green. And I remember going to Artie and saying, Artie, do you think, do you think I can be a good farmer? <laughs> and he said, um, if you work hard, I know you can be a good farmer. And he was right about that, because I think that's the bottom line, to love what you're doing and to, and to enjoy the work that you do. So that's, that's, um, that's the beginning of being here. Um, the next thing that I want to say is that we I never didn't farm before, and I didn't have any training as a gardener before. Um, I had my hands in the soil in my dad's gardens when I was a little kid, and then um, and enjoyed that. And then when I was uh, 22, when Dawn and I had the first opportunity, I had my first garden, and it was a wonderful success, and I was hooked. And from that time on. Uh, in the various apartments and little places that we rented, I always had a garden. And sometimes it was only an area that was, you know, four feet by eight feet, and sometimes it was a little bit bigger, and sometimes there'd just be a few greens, and sometimes it was a little more extensive. But uh, from that time, I've always had a garden, and it's been a continual learning process, which I'm still definitely learning all the time now. Um, so, so. Coming to the island and becoming a food producer, food producer on a larger scale uh, happened sort of by accident, actually, because we knew we, we didn't want to be in the city. We wanted to change our lifestyle. And the first thing that happened was we, we come to Maine Island for, to visit friends for a number of years, and, and actually the place that we stayed was on hard scrabble. Mm -hmm. So we had this frame of reference for this beautiful place that we, we loved. And, and uh, what happened was we actually fell in love with this piece of property, which is where we now live. I, I feel very fortunate to be there. Um, but when you buy a piece of property like that, which is, you know, already had all the infrastructure, he had cattle, he had hay, he had hay fields, um, you can't just buy it and sit there and look at it. Otherwise, what you're looking at is an alder forest and, and blackberries. And uh, since it was all there, it, it made sense to, to uh, to, to carry on with what Artie was doing. In fact, Artie said, I mean, in the negotiations, and some of you probably heard this story, but Artie said to us, so do you want to buy the cows? And we said, well, sure. You know, that, that seems like it's probably a good idea. And what about the hay equipment? Well, I guess so, you know. And uh, we went into it uh, blindly and uh, with uh, incredible naivete and a lot of uh, optimism. And uh, had a very steep learning curve at the beginning because we didn't didn't really know anything about raising cattle and about um, haying and all that sort of stuff. That was a new world for us. And um, some of you may have heard the story about already that, that um, Dawn's told before. I know where um, we were coming over and planting a garden after we built the house, and we bought from him twelve red cows. And we got here one weekend, and already said. One of your cows is dead. And we said, oh, um, what happened? She said, well, she died of old age. And we said, how old are the other cows we bought? <laughs> <laughs> she said, oh, they're all about the same age. <laughs> and the thing was that Artie would have told us everything completely honestly, but we didn't even know the questions to ask. We were coming into it. We bought this beautiful farm. We bought it as an operating uh, 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 an operating farm, and we were very fortunate to be there. And things we we we've learned a lot. <laughs> so, um, what we did that first year is we we started learning about about taking on what Artie had already started. He left us with an incredible infrastructure. Uh, if anyone here has been to the farm, it's a it's a wonderful place where where things are really well set up for for all the things he was doing. I planted a garden that first year and was shocked at the abundance of it. In fact, you know, we, we fed our two families. My brother and his wife owned the farm with us and, and still had plenty to give away. And uh, 
very quickly we realized that um, if we were going to grow like this, and I couldn't help expanding the gardens because it was something that was a passion for me, and, and uh, we realized that if we were going to grow like this, then we needed to be able to figure out what to do with the produce because <laughs> there was no market. And uh, so we put in the commercial kitchen, and we thought, well, at least we'll be able to have a longer period. We'll, we'll process our product, and then we'll have a year to be able to sell the stuff that we, the, we grow in the summer. And that was a good start, and we, we, that's, been a, that's been a wonderful success. I, I enjoy that, and it's a good part of our farm. Um, a few years into it, we still found sometimes that we were just buried in, in the amount of food that was coming out of our garden. And, and I remember one time Dawn said, I'm just going to take these boxes of stuff and I'm going to go down on Saturday and I park in front of the Ag Hall and I'm going to sell it. And I said, and I was incredibly skeptical and I felt a little uneasy about it. It seemed kind of odd to just go out there with all your stuff and sit there with boxes on the back of the truck. Um, but Dawn went down with you know, a couple of hundred pounds of tomatoes and various <coughs> other vegetables, and he came back with an empty truck. Mm -hmm. And that was really neat. It was really neat to realize that there was a real demand, there was a real desire by people here to buy food that is locally grown and fresh. And, um, and we started thinking, and that winter we, we um, there's already, I mean, all of you probably know Ron Pither had been growing already, growing food here for a couple of decades. And then there's a number of other people growing. So over that winter, we met with a number of people, some of whom are here, Joyce mm -hmm. and uh, Helen and a few other people. And we got together and we started talking about the farmer's market. So that was in the winter of uh, 2001. And uh, on the May weekend of uh, 2001, we opened the first of, of our farmer's market that we all enjoy so, so much every Saturday now. And that's... It's been a great thing, and I. But um, so um, that's uh, that's how the market came about. And at this point, um, we're, we're we've been certified organic since 1996. That um, um, you can't have a sustainable garden by putting in pesticides, fungicides, herbicides, and chemical amendments to make the soil produce food. You have to make sure that you've got a, a, a healthy, balanced soil. And the healthy, balanced soil will actually have a, a lot of capacity for fighting off uh, disease and um, uh, other problems that you may have with your plants. So it's, um, for me, the word organic is difficult because it's got a lot of, um, it's become such a marketing tool. And I think it's much more than that. It's about um, uh, looking after our soil. Um, uh, not putting amendments in that are, are going to actually stay in the soil on the long term and, and affect uh, growth for uh, many, many years to come. I mean, you go to France where we've got those beautiful vineyards and they use uh, copper, copper oxychloride in those all the time because powdery mildew is a problem there as well as being a problem here. If you take out one of those beautiful old vineyards, which has got 40-year-old grapevines, you cannot start new vines in that soil because it's toxic. Mm -hmm. And that's a real problem, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have to just be aware of that as we, as we carry on. Every day is varied. The seasons change. There's a million different jobs to do, so I don't feel like a drudge. I don't feel like I have to go out and do the same thing day after day. And I also feel that there's a... Uh, a very blurred line before, between what's work and what's a lifestyle choice. Mm -hmm. And for me, I feel incredibly fortunate to be able to have made this lifestyle choice. And uh, I also feel really lucky to be able to come to the market and have be received with the enthusiasm and appreciation that I get there. Because that's the other thing that really helps me, is, is knowing that, yes, it really matters when people are buying the fresh uh, produce or the local meat or the local chickens or whatever it happens to be, it matters to them. And, and uh, for me, that's also a really important part of the, the piece. And I think that's all I have to say. <laughs>